What's going on, everybody? Welcome back into the channel. Today, we are bringing you a matchup, a best two out of three between Cassian Aggression and Palpatine Cunning. So we're just going to obviously have a matchup between me and Josh and see which deck comes out on top. Now, at the end of the video, we're going to be going over the giveaway, the time, and what's going to be given away and all that stuff. So if you guys are excited for that, stay tuned to the end and you'll get that information, of course. And obviously, these are two totally different styles of play. We have the Cassian deck that's trying to go as fast as possible, dealing out as much damage as quickly as possible, obviously. And then we have the Palpatine deck that's going to be using its ability to draw deal damage to the opponent's units and trying to take them over as they start ramping with super laser tech and resupply and stuff like that and get their board state better than the opponent's board state and then kind of switch the game, right? Obviously, in the beginning, the aggression deck is going to be a little bit better, but as the game goes on, Palpatine can flip the switch just like that by taking over units and taking out the opponent's units as well. So this is going to be a really cool matchup between the two decks, and I hope you guys enjoy. So let's get right into it. So here we go. I win the initiative, and so I'm going to start this game, and I'm also going to leave the initiative token right in the middle because I'm kind of dumb like that. So it is what it is. Josh does try to hand me the initiative token when we start going on. But I'm going to start off with Wolf as I hit the token. But here we go, get the token. So I've got Wolf. It's going to stop my opponent from being able to heal in any type of way. And also, it's a pretty good unit for the two cost. It's a 3 2. And then we have the Patrol V Wing already starting off with my opponent to get that card draw, not even using the ability. He's just going to go ahead and draw using that Patrol V Wing. Now, obviously, as an aggro deck, I want to try to get initiative as much as possible. And my first action when I do have the initiative as an aggro player here is to attack the base. The reason you want to do that is because you don't want to risk losing out on any type of damage on the board. You don't want to you want to do as much damage as quickly as possible using your units on the board before you start using your resources for the most part. Right. So I go off and I swing for three. And then I'm, you know, I have Tarkin Town. Like, I don't even know if I Tarkin Town's worse. I'm just kind of talking with my opponent. Right. But now we see Josh has a really cool card in hand, and we'll see how that one plays out. But he's going to go ahead and swing right away with the Patrol V-Wing. I'm going to go ahead and drop down my Fighters for Freedom. Now, Fighters for Freedom is good in the deck because every time I play a red card, I deal one damage to my opponent's deck uh, base, I mean. And now you see the Sneak Attack with Super Laser Tech, one of the best combos. One, you're playing Super Laser Tech for two, but also it comes out ready and it dies automatically. So he's going to be able to use it to swing into my wolf, getting rid of my unit, getting that control going, and now he's back up to two resources on the board. I take the initiative, I have nothing else to do. He's going to use Palpatine's ability to deal one damage to my fleet lieutenant, take out his own unit in the process, but also he gets to draw a card, and you see he gets another super laser tech to help with that ramping. And it's kind of, you know, it gets kind of crazy like that. So we're getting to put down our resources and we are good to go now i'm going to go ahead and swing right away with the fleet lieutenant not the fleet lieutenant the fighters for freedom i'm going to deal three damage so i'm continuously getting those three damage shots onto my opponent's base he brings out the super laser tech to help out his aggro uh, not aggro, uh his ramping right i now i'm going to play my second fighters for freedom i'm going to proc the first one deal one damage to my opponent's base so i've done a total of four damage this turn but also now whenever i play a red card it's going to deal two damage to the opponent's base so that's pretty good there you're going to see the palpatine's ability for the cost of one, popping out his super laser tech. So essentially the thing becomes free because he's spending the one, but then getting one back and it's all readied. And then I'm going to spend one and draw a card myself. So we're both going to be able to draw off our leader's abilities there because I did three damage as well. So we're going to see him go ahead and try to get more cards. He could have gained the initiative, but it wouldn't have done anything for him essentially, except for play something on the board, possibly maybe outmaneuver or something like that. But he goes ahead and plays the prepare for takeoff and he now is now looking for vehicles to add to his hand to add options into what units he can play next turn. So he goes ahead and he grabs his walker here and his striping gunship. And so his striping gunship is also really good in controlling the board because he can attack from space into the ground and those ground units do two less damage back to it. So that's really good there. So he's going to be able to could probably control the ground and try to go that way right so we go ahead we ready up we're readying up the resources and i have to try to find the best way to deal as much damage as possible because he has two super laser techs into his resource pile so he's ramped up twice and so we're both going to get our leaders on the same turn and that's really bad for me so my thought process here is to make sure i have no damage units as long as possible because if i have any damage units 
they become an obvious target for my opponent to take over. And if he takes over one of my fighters for freedom, it'd be kind of annoying. So my first instinct here is use uh, Heroic Sacrifice with my fighters of freedom. So one, both fighters for freedom are procced off. They do two damage to the base. And then I swing and get two extra damage. So a total of seven damage onto the board. And then I also get to draw a card. So I lose the damage unit. I get to deal the extra damage from my two fighters for freedom because it was played. And then I get to draw a card as well. And on top of that, I get to deal the five damage from the fighters for freedom attack because of the card. So that was just a really good way to get the damage unit off the board as well as getting seven damage into his base. So I was able to do a lot with just one attack. He hit, plays his Emperor's Royal Guard. It's good. It is a Sentinel. Fires of Freedom is a Saboteur, so I don't really worry too much about that. But when he has Emperor Palpatine, it has the extra HP, so it can become a problem for my other units. He's now going to go ahead and play the Skiff after I attack with my Fires for Freedom there. And he's just going to go ahead and take the three damage, and I'm going to lose my Fires for Freedom, which is kind of bad for me because i have no units on the board so now i have to try to figure out a way to go about that he has the sentinel and the ground unit i now decide to take the space and try to go from there i'm gonna go ahead and draw a card because i did the three damage into base this turn and this is one of my misplays this match i should have used tarkin town here on the skiff but i completely forgot to do that and that's on me but we move on and we continue on here because you can't let that bother you because i do realize at the draw phase like oh i should have tarkin town but you know you just have to move past it if you realize that you do make a mistake in the match don't let it bring you down because once you start thinking about what you could have done it starts to derail your plan so right now just have to put it in the past and just kind of move forward really now he has to kind of decide whether or not he wants to go ahead and play his palpatine out from here or get damage on the base now that was a smart move he chooses to get his skiff damage onto the base because he can then use palpatine's ability to do damage to my red three when he brings it out he can go ahead and take it over right i use my fleet lieutenant to deal five damage with my red three so i get a little bit of extra damage using fleet lieutenant which is good and now he has to figure out if it's time to start using palpatine's ability bring out palpatine and stuff like that so he brings out yularen yularen here is not a bad play because he does get to heal off of that ability so he heals for one and you're starting to see the flip in the amount of units on board right between the two sides I now go ahead and I play my Fighters for Freedom here, and this is pretty sad, right? You play Fighters for Freedom, and you hope for the best. I have Partisan and Sonizen, whiff, 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 and uh, whiff. So, the one good thing is, yes, I didn't do any damage from Fighters for Freedom, which is pretty bad, but I'm able to still kind of decide what goes on top. So, I keep Saul Guerrera, and I keep Precision Fire on top of my deck. I toss the other two because i don't really need them right now in this matchup even though the wolf could have been good to stop my opponent from healing i have to make sure that i take him out next turn or i'm in a really bad spot right so i kept precision fire on top because of the sentinel and then on top of that i was just like saw guerrera if anything if i have to drop him down to try to get damage when he plays events that is what it is he then chooses to go ahead and use palpatine's ability which is smart because now he goes ahead and he deals damage to my red three I bring out Cassian with red three on the board. It's dealing five damage into the base because of Saboteur. And now he chooses to bring out Palpatine and he takes over the red three. I no longer have that raid. I then go ahead and swing into the base here. I have Saboteur. So I deal the four and I get to draw a card, which is good. And now he has to kind of decide whether or not to take the initiative or start taking out my units. He has to take out my units because of the damage I can do next turn, right? So he swings four into Cassian because Cassian has Saboteur. It can become a problem next turn. I won't end up winning, but you don't, he doesn't know if I have Fleet Lieutenant in hand. If I have Fleet Lieutenant or anything else in hand, like Heroic Sacrifice, I can manage to take him out. So he has to take out Cassian because he knows that he can swing with Saboteur. So there goes Cassian. He takes four damage with his Emperor's Royal Guard. And I have one unit on the board. And he has four, and things have completely switched for him. And in, I take the initiative, and he plays a strafing gunship. Good play on his part. Now he has five units to my one, but we all saw, saw, we all saw that I put precision fire on top, and I can go ahead and deal the five damage with precision fire. Obviously, I'm going to start off, and because Fleet Lieutenant is a trooper, I'm going to use precision fire and swing for five. So that's going to do it for game one. I was able to just barely squeak out there with the Cassian deck because. The Emperor deck there really set up well 
especially with all that ramping he took over my red three i was able to do extra damage so the consider fire really saved me with the even with the botched up four claws i believe in i was still able to use it for the victory and now we're going to go ahead and hop over to game two after we hit up our sideboards i start to add more heroic stuff into my deck not gonna lie but we're gonna hit up our sideboards and we're gonna hop into side uh match two all right so now we're here in game two obviously josh is gonna have the initiative in game two and we're gonna see how this one goes out so we're gonna start off he's gonna go ahead and play his season shore trooper for two and i'm just gonna start off with green squadron a wing in space green squadron a wing is one of my favorite plays to do especially first turn just to be able to get that this plus fleet lieutenant as soon as possible and stuff like that makes it so it, i could deal a lot of damage from space and if he doesn't start playing some space units it becomes hard to kind of deal with because i'm just kind of using fleet lieutenant and other things to kind of just deal out a ton of damage but with that being said i have to see what he does and i'll go over my thought process after he goes ahead and uses his cards so first things first he's gonna go ahead and bring out his super laser tech so that's pretty good there i see that he's out of resources so i don't want to use my fleet lieutenant right away this turn i go ahead and i use my wing leader to power up my uh green squadron a wing because of the ability to not have to really worry about him dealing damage or taking out my green squadron a wing so he does two to my base using his uh season short trooper and i'm gonna go ahead and deal five on the first attack with my green squadron a wing so that's really good there and now when i start playing my fleet lieutenants he's gonna start dealing seven damage instead of five so that's why i kind of went that way i had nothing to fear because he used all of his resources early and i didn't really have to worry about it he goes ahead and he deals two damage with his super laser technician with palpatine's ability that is able to do that because he can still use the ability to pop it right so he doesn't have to wait for me to put a unit down i play the fleet lieutenant and i deal seven damage like i was talking about before with the green squadron a-wing and i'm off and running i'm doing a ton of damage with just two attacks so he goes ahead and uses palpatine's ability it's essentially free because it goes back readied so he does get to draw a card and he takes out my wing leader which is pretty good i then use my leader's ability to draw a card so i'm trying to get that draw power trying to put myself into better situations he still has a ton of resources to kind of play around with and i'm kind of out of things i can do you know you kind of do what you got to do with fleet lieutenant but then from there it's just pretty much over right he puts down his star viper he's gonna go ahead and deal two damage to my base putting me at six uh i have a stroke in the game shop because i i don't know what the heck i'm doing apparently when it comes to math but yep i have six damage on base and I obviously have the initiative now, and we go to ready up here. It's essentially not as far as damage goes, but we're, you know, keeping up unit for unit. You see another wing leader in my hand, and I have two fires for freedom. I decided to put down the fires for freedom just in case I want to use the wing leader again. But I also have to be kind of smart with how I handle the situation, because Palpatine being able to take over units, this could become a problem later on in the game. So... I have to focus on getting damage as quick as possible. So obviously with the second fleet lieutenant in hand, I'm going to go ahead and pop his base again for another seven. Doing 19 in the first three attacks with green squadron A-wing is crazy. Also, I read up my buddy's uh, units there because I'm a good friend. But it's just, he's going to go ahead and because he has six resources, he's going to pop my other fleet lieutenant. It's a good play there. And so now I have two resources. I have nothing in my hand I can play for two. So I'm just going to go ahead and use Cassian and draw because I know he's not going to take the initiative here because he's going to want to try to get some type of damage and use those resources. He has a ton of resources to use. So I just have to kind of see what he wants to do here and go on from there, right? He plays the Lauren. He's going to heal the one, putting him at 18. And I'm going to go ahead and take the initiative and he's going to play the patrol wing. He's going to heal again and he's going to go ahead and draw a card. And then on top of that, he's now going to go ahead and use Palpatine's ability to draw a card and deal one damage to the Green Squadron A-Wing. And now, though he has seven resources here, actually, I think he has six resources here, but soon he'll be able to take over my, my Green Squadron A-Wing. He has to decide whether or not to attack into it with the Star Viper, whether it's okay that he might take damage from it next turn, or he has to deal damage into my base, right? So he decides to deal the three damage into my base rather than the... Uh, Green Squadron A-Wing because he does want to take it over, I'm assuming. But next turn, I'm going to be able to bring out the Cassian. And in two turns, he'll be able to bring out the, the Palpatine. So that becomes kind of scary, right? 
Because if he can take my green squadron A-wing, then all the things I was doing to him come back to bite me, right? So, he's deciding whether or not to put down the resupply, which he does end up doing. He already ramped up a couple times using uh, super laser tech, so I think the resupply in the resources is okay. I deal another 5 damage to his base using the green squadron A-wing. And I'm in a really good spot. He has 8 HP left, and we just keep on rolling, you know? Next, we see the, the skiff come out here, and he's taking out my fleet lieutenant. He's gaining another HP off of Yalaren, and that's on me. Like, these fleet lieutenants aren't able to deal any damage. I'm now going to go ahead and deal 4 damage to his Star Viper, and I'm going to re-ready up my Green Squadron A-Wing. Being able to deal another 5 damage into the base would be really, really strong for me set me up for some really good finishing up opportunities next turn so now if obviously my opponent has to decide a, a figure out a way to maybe take out the green squadron a wing or slow it down right playing yellow you have a ton of options to do that and he decides to go ahead and play the no good to me dead and he does want to read up on the cassian but he's gonna play the no good to me dead here which is a good play it does stop my green squadron a wing from being able to attack this turn and next turn so he slows it down and then it will get him up to the point where he can take it over with Palpatine and then it will ready up the turn after he takes it over. So that's a really good setup for my opponent there. I'm trying to decide whether or not to draw a card then bring out my Cassian, but I decide to just go ahead and bring out Cassian here and you'll see why in a little bit, but Cassie is not out here. I'm going to be able to deal four damage to my opponent's base and also draw a card off of that. So it's good draw power. I could have drawn two cards, but he's going to go ahead and swing Yularen. And again, I have another stroke. I do not know why. Uh, my math in this game, I, I don't even know what happened, but I'm, I'm putting too many. I'm taking too many back. And now obviously I have 11 damage on my base. It's just, it is what it is. But I'm going to go ahead and swing four into his base. So he has five HP left. I'm going to be able to draw a card off of that, which is pretty good. And now he's going to take the initiative. And I decided not to draw a card off the ability earlier. So I can go ahead and get another unit out. And I'm going to play another, I'm going to play a Sabine, right? This way I have more options to get damage off next turn, knowing that I don't have Green Squadron A-Wing. But also I'm going to use Tarkin Town's ability this, this game because I remembered. And we get rid of the skiff. And so he has Yalarin staring down two guys. And that green squadron A-Wing is obviously not readied. I'm just stupid. So I, I don't attack with it. It gets re-exhausted in 20 seconds. But we have two guys staring down Yalarin. His mustache might not last too much longer. But here we go. I get rid of the super exhaust token. Now we have our resources down, and he just goes off right away and takes over my Green Squadron A-Wing. Uh, he readies it, even though it's not readied. It just is there. But still, he brings it over, and I have no access to my Green Squadron A-Wing. I'm going to go ahead and set him down to 1 HP and draw a card off of it. He has to now choose to take out my Sabine really that's really his only option because if he doesn't then he ends up losing the game on her attack he could outmaneuver right there he saw in hand but he does a smart thing and chooses not to because he has more units here so he's going to use Palpatine to swing into Sabine taking out Sabine he'll take two damage back to Palpatine he's going to pop the green squadron a-wing here to be able to draw another card and deal a damage to Cassian so he's trying to set up some other plays yes he did give up a good unit in green squadron a-wing but still he wanted to get that draw power to see if he can get anything off i play saw guerrera here mainly because if now if he chooses to play a an event at any time he will end up losing because it will do two damage to him and he only has uh one hp left now he goes ahead and he plays out the reinforcement walker He's going to be able to look at the top card of the deck. If he draws it, he gets to draw it. Cool. If he discards it, he heals three from the base. So he chooses to do so. He also gets to heal an extra one because Yalaren's on the field. So he heals four off of that, which is pretty good there. And the thing is, is that at this point, there's nothing I can really do that'll put me in a better situation than this. Saul Guerrero does five damage and he can't take it out with Yalaren. So 
I now can just go ahead, take the initiative, and set up myself next turn to win the game because he cannot take out my strongest unit that does five damage. And he has no resources left because he had the reinforcement walker to try to get much, as much HP as possible, right? So now he has Yalar in here. He can, and he chooses to do so, to swing into my base for two. He attacks, he does the two damage, and then we go to the next turn. And obviously you guys know that I have enough on the board to just swing with Sal Guerrera and take out the base. And that's going to do it for that. Uh, but with that being said, obviously Palpatine yellow against aggression. That first game you saw just how he was about to switch the script. If I didn't get the uh, four cause, I believe, and get the precision fire on top of the deck, I would have probably lost game one and we would have been going into a game three. So with that being said, both these decks, ton of fun to play. Palpatine Yellow is also a really good answer to Boba Green. And so hopefully I can go ahead and get that deck list for you guys and show off him playing against Boba Green because he does really well against that matchup. So that's also a lot of fun there. But before we head on out of here, let's hop into the giveaway, right? The giveaway is going to happen Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a stream. I'm going to be streaming me and Matt. We're going to be making a budget deck well, first, we're probably going to be doing a webcam matchup between the two of us. We just want to play a couple games, right? Then we're going to make a budget deck list with you guys. We're going to do a poll in the chat to see what leader you guys want to build on the budget. And then on top of that, we're going to be giving that deck away. And I'm going to be putting in hyperspace and foil cards as much as I can to bling out that budget deck for you guys. So we are going to be building a budget deck. We're going to be giving away that budget deck, but we're also going to be like blinging it out. So that's going to be a lot of fun there. And then on top of that, we're also going to be giving away an Admiral Akbar giant card. So if you guys want that giant Admiral Akbar and you're excited for this giveaway, make sure you tune in Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I hope to see you guys there. And with that being said, we're going to go on and head out of here. Again, I just want to give back to you guys for all the support that you've given me. And I always want to show my appreciation towards you guys. But again, with that being said, we're going to hop on out of here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.